In Jeffrey's latest Larabit, he discusses what he refers to as the intermediate trap, essentially being a little bit eager with solid principles and as a result, obfuscating your code base. His solution for that was an action class. And I'm here to do a scathing review on the use of action classes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love action classes. I've talked about them at length in the past. I've done conference talks about them. I've dived very deep into what's possible with a simple action class. And in this Larabit, I actually wanted to take Jeffrey's example a little bit further to show you how you can extend action classes for even more powerful use cases. Here's Jeffrey's mark best reply action in all of its original glory, updating the database, recording activity, awarding experience, and then notifying the user. Now, I've started working on a second action called complete series, which essentially in the database marks a series as complete when the user's finished watching it. At this point, I would like to extend complete a series because when you complete a series, much as mark best reply awards experience to the user, I'd like to do very much the same. You should get some experience points for completing a series, just as you do on, on Laracasts, right? So how would we do that? Well, of course, we could just copy and paste the code across. So I'll take it from the mark best reply action. I'll drop it in here. We'll pass the user in rather than the reply, seen as we're not dealing with a reply in this instance. And then I can just increment the experience directly on the user. And then inside our complete series action, I can say this award experience passing in the correct user. But come on, you can see the pitfall already, right? We're duplicating code. What, what if a, a third action needs to do the same thing, a fourth action, a fifth action, a tenth action? All of a sudden, if you ever need to change how experience is granted to a user, you're going to have a lot of code to update and a lot of tests to change as well. So why don't we just extract a sub action that will handle experience for us? Inside our actions directory, we can create a new class. We'll call it award experience, nice and declarative. And then inside here, we'll have our standard handle method, public function handle. Uh, we'll grab the user that we want to award experience to. And we'll also make sure that we can define separately how much experience that user should be given. Okay. Now we can come back to complete series. We'll grab this code here and we can paste it in the handle method like so, passing in the experience directly. With our action set up, we can now go back into our other actions. So let's start with complete series and we'll create a constructor at the top and accept an instance of that sub action, private award experience, award experience. And instead of deferring to a method on the action itself, we'll say this award experience handle passing in the user and the amount of experience to change by, let's say 200 for completing a series. We can remove this method and then we can move to the other action, mark best reply. And we'll do the same thing. We'll inject into the constructor private award experience, award experience. And again, instead of calling a method here, we're going to handle it via the sub action. So we'll pass reply user and 1000 experience for actually being marked as the best reply. We can remove this method here. And then let's go to the mark best reply test and ensure that nothing's broken by running these tests again. Great, it all worked. So we successfully refactored to an action within an action in order to encapsulate that logic and avoid repeating ourselves. But we can go further. See, at the moment, we manually test inside the mark best reply test file that the user has been awarded experience. It's not too bad. It's four lines of code. But let's say we need to test the same thing inside the complete series test, which if we want a complete test suite, we absolutely do need to do that. That's now eight lines of code duplicated code that basically checks for the same thing. Let's say there's a third action, a fourth action, a 10th action that awards experience. Well, all of a sudden you're going to have 10 test files that check basically the same thing, but you have to have those tests in place if you want to ensure that everything works. Or, or let's say that we increase what happens when you award experience. For example, let's say, well, look, if the user reaches the next level, I've 
had a little helper method on the user model for this, then we want to notify the user that they leveled up. So we'll say user uh, notify. And then we can say inside here, a new level up notification passing in the user that leveled up. All right, so we've extended what happens when experience is awarded, which is no problem. Actions allow us to do that. But now what do we do? Do we go back into mark best reply test and also add a test under here for checking the notification was sent? And then do we do the same thing inside the complete series test and in the fourth, fifth, tenth action that also awards experience? No, that's not how we want to work. So what we'll do instead is we'll test our new action, the awards experience action in isolation. And then in all of the parent tests, we just have to check that that action gets called and we're covered. Let's create a new test file then. We'll call it award experience test.php. And we'll make a start with that basic check that experience is actually awarded to the user. So it gives the user experience. And inside here, first of all, we'll need a user, user factory create. Then we want to execute the action. And this is a sub action. So we're not going to be executing it by calling a controller. We're just going to execute the action directly. We can say action equals, and then I'm going to grab the app instance from the test case and ask it to make an instance of the award experience class. And that will make sure that the container resolves any dependencies for us. We don't have to worry about building the object manually. Finally, we can call action handle. We'll pass in the user and the amount of experience they receive, maybe 1000 experience in this case. And then we just need to perform the same checks that we performed in our other tests. So expect that at first the user has no experience. User experience to be zero. But after we call the action, we would expect user experience to be 1000. And we'll have to make sure to get a fresh instance of the user from the database like so. OK, so if we run this test, yes, you can see it works. And of course, as we said in award experience, we also now notify the user if they level up. So we could write a second test for that inside this same file. We test this action in isolation. So in this case, we'd be saying it notifies the user of a level up. And the logic for leveling up is basically, did you get over a thousand points? Have you reached the next uh, thousand points? So we could copy some of this, maybe down to here. And when we award experience, we'll award 1001 points. At the top here, we can say notification, make sure I import the right one, notification fake. And then I can use that little notification facade helper. That would be notification assert sent to. And we're looking for the user and I'm looking for the level up notification class. All right, let's run that. And you can see that it passes. So we've now tested the award experience action in isolation. And anytime I make changes to award experience, I come back to this test. I run both tests in this file. If they pass, I know that it works correctly. But what do we have to do inside the parent action tests? Well, as we said, we no longer need to test this process manually because those tests are now contained inside the award experience test file. Instead, we're only interested in if award experience was called by this parent action. And we can use a mock to ensure that happened. Let's remove this expectation then. And instead, we're going to say this mock, which is available in any Laravel feature test, we're going to mock out the award experience class and we're going to say that we expect a call to the handle method, which of course is exactly what we have here inside the action itself. We also want to specify the arguments that we'd expect. So with args, we'll allow you to do that. We're going to pass in a closure that receives a user and also the experience that we received. Those are the two arguments that get passed into the handle method. And here we just need to return a Boolean if what is provided here matches our expectations in the test. So we could say user is, and then we can pass in the reply user like so. And we could also say that the experience is equal to 1000 because that's how much experience we provide whenever you're marked as the best reply. So once we've set up that mock, we can actually delete this final expectation 
and just call the endpoint, which will fire the action, which will fire the sub-action of award experience, and hopefully our mock will pass. If we run this test, yes, you can see that it passes. But check out what happens if I change this, say, to 999 instead. If we run it now, it fails because the mock didn't meet the expectations. And of course, now we could copy this code here, and then we could head over to our complete series test. And let's come down and say it awards experience. Let's drop our mock in place. And let's go ahead, create a user at the top because we'll need that in just a moment. And also we can fire off the post request. Nice. And then we just need to update what actually happens in our mock here. So obviously we have two variables named user. Let's call this authenticated user. And then we'll drop that here and we'll drop that here. And then we can just update this to check for this user variable instead. And we already said, didn't we, that you only get 200 experience uh, when you complete a series. So we'll update the expectation in the mock. And then finally, we need to just change this to authenticated user. Let's run the test and it passes. Very cool. Let's run both tests in the file. They both pass. So there we go. That's how I would extend my use of actions as my application logic becomes more complicated. Now from any parent action, we simply inject our sub action award experience in this case, we make use of it. And in the tests, all we have to do is check that that action was actually used. We have a separate test for the award experience action itself. So if we ever need to increase the scope of what that action does, the sub actions, the uh, side effects that are caused by awarding experience, we have a single test file and a single place to do that in our code base. Actions are incredibly cool and they're a great way to be able to continue to clean up and have an understandable code base, even as your application logic expands over time. So take Jeffrey's tip with you, but also remember, there is no limit to what you can actually accomplish with actions. Use it to create an architecture that makes complete sense for your particular application. And most importantly, have fun. All right, I'll see you in the next one.